Hello and welcome to Nursing Emergencies Adrenal Insufficiency. This is part of our Nursing Emergencies program. My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. When we're talking about adrenal insufficiency, it helps to know what is going on as far as the hormones, beginning with the cortisol that we eventually want to see secreted, we have to start up in the brain, in the hypothalamus and the pituitary. So the hypothalamus signals the pituitary to release cortisol regulating hormone, which then stimulates the pituitary to release ACTH, stimulating the adrenal glands. Once the adrenal glands are stimulated, then cortisol will be released. So this is the process that we expect to see happen in our patients in order to be able to develop cortisol and maintain our bodily functions. When we're taking a look at the adrenal gland, you can see there's a number of different hormones that are stimulated, or a number of different hormones that are released from the adrenal gland. So let's take a look at each one of them, working from our left side to the right, starting with our mineral corticoids. These help to regulate the salt balance and blood volume. Therefore, if we have adrenal insufficiency, we are going to see a patient who is going to have trouble maintaining their fluid volume and their sodium. So these will be one of the pieces that we're going to have to assess and to treat with patients who have adrenal insufficiency. And of course, having a low sodium balance could lead the patient to developing additional neurologic deficits, which then could further decrease the amount of secretion of ACTH and the stimulation of the adrenals. Glucocorticoids release or help to regulate glucose metabolism. Glucocorticoids are often given to our patient to help to decrease inflammation. Those are our steroids. Androgens stimulate masculinity and our stress hormones are going to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system in order to be able to help to maintain homeostasis in times of stress. When we have adrenal insufficiency, it can be a number of different causes. The most common type is going to be tertiary and from corticosteroid cessation or withdrawal. So our patient is on steroids for a long period of time, suddenly they stop taking them. A uh, very common scenario for this would be somebody who is taking maybe prednisone on a daily basis and they run out of their prescription, they can't get it refilled for whatever reason, and then they end up having a sudden cessation of their corticosteroids and develop adrenal insufficiency. We may also see it even at a lower dose of steroid if the patient is on long-term steroids for a long period of time. So it doesn't have to be a high dose, it doesn't have to be you know, 40 or 80 of prednisone a day. It could be a low dose of prednisone each day that the patient is taking for a long period of time and then suddenly stops. So this is why we want to taper off steroids when our patient is taking them. Primary type of adrenal insufficiency is rare. It is usually caused by an autoimmune disease and could be the result of an infection. So there's a possibility of an initial infection causing an autoimmune response and then adrenal insufficiency. Secondary is the impairment of the pituitary or the hypothalamus decreasing our ACTH level. On presentation, expect to see weakness, hyperpigmentation of the skin, weight loss, hypotension, bradycardia. Okay, now these things are caused by the loss of that fluid. Remember that fluid loss is a major contributor here as a result of the loss of mineral corticoids. So we have a decrease in our blood pressure and a decrease in the heart rate. So the blood pressure is going down primarily from a loss of fluid, but also because we don't have those stress hormones, the epinephrine, norepinephrine, running around in the bloodstream, helping to maintain blood pressure and heart rate. Thyroid function tests can be altered and the ACTH stimulation test is going to be our definitive test to tell us about adrenal insufficiency. If you look over on the right hand side there, there's the fish bones that we used to use very frequently when reporting our chemistries. Notice some of the things that are happening with our patient with adrenal insufficiency. Primarily the low sodium and the high potassium. 
The low sodium can lead to the patient developing some cerebral edema and potentially maybe having some additional complications. High potassium level obviously can lead to cardiac dysrhythmias. We may also see some acidosis as a result of the decrease in the bicarb, may see low glucose levels, and a high BUN and creatinine. Our prompt action then will be volume replacement, okay, because uh, again, the patient's going to have this loss of volume because we're not controlling it well. Hyponatremia is gonna be our most common electrolyte disorder, so we wanna be looking for that. Hypoglycemia, hyperkalemia, and the possibility of hypercalcemia too. So in order of the most common to least common listed there. Well, if the problem is a lack of steroid, then the treatment is steroid. So we give hydrocortisone, 100 milligrams IV push, Q6 hours as the replacement. To wrap up our endocrine disorders, hypoglycemia, we expect the lab test to show a glucose less than 60, CNS depression, hypotension as our sign of doom. In DKA, we'd expect to see a glucose in the range of 150 to 600, polyphagia, polydyspia, polyuria, and tachycardia as being our symptoms that the patient has DKA, with coma and hypotension being the signs of doom. HHS, which is hyperosmolar hyperglycemic syndrome, glucose is very high in the range of 600 to 1200, tachycardia, orthostatic hypotension are our primary symptoms, with hypotension and shock as the signs of doom. Thyroid storm, we're going to see an elevation in T3 with a decrease in TSH. Agitation, hypertension, tachycardia, and fever are the symptoms. Hypotension and shock, indicating that we are running out of our thyroid hormones, being our signs of doom. Adrenal insufficiency, ACTH stimulation test will be our lab test that will be definitive. Weakness, bradycardia, CNS depression, those are going to be our primary symptoms on exam, and hypotension will be the sign of doom that this patient is decompensating. So our endocrine quick check will be to look for a change in mental status. Our endocrine problems will cause changes in mental status either related to the primary disorder or the underlying disorder that is caused by electrolyte abnormalities. We may see some stimulation or inhibition of the sympathetic nervous system with tachycardia or bradycardia, dysrhythmia, tachypnea or bradypnea. Again, all of these, although they may look like other things, tachycardia or dysrhythmias, tachypnea, those kind of things may look like the patient is having a cardiac disorder. So we want to be able to Make sure that we are following this through. Change in mental status looks like it's a neuro disorder. So our endocrine disorders are primarily going to look like something different. They're not going to look like endocrine. It's going to look like a cardiac problem or a neuro problem. That's when we need to do a little bit more exam and do a little bit more looking to find our endocrine disorders. Well, thank you for joining me for Adrenal Insufficiency. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, I'll have